Hello. Hi everyone, my name is Nanika. Um, today we're gonna do a live session on graduate diploma of early childhood teaching, the skill assessment and its PR pathway. I will just share my screen. Give me just two seconds. I hope everyone can see my screen now. So the session for today is uh, Graduate Diploma for Early Childhood, its Skill Assessment, and the PR Pathway. Um, these are the services offered by Aussies Group. So we do offer PTE tutorials, CCL tutorials, IELTS. Um, you can also download this application called OcuSearch. It's very good. You can also go on and explore the getmypolicy.online if you need any health insurance related um, help or if you need to check codes from different health insurance providers. So let's start with the course information. If you look at these points that have been mentioned, um, I'm just going to give you a brief of the course so that it's, e that it's easier for both of us to just communicate. So now um, the course allows graduates of degree programs to become early childhood teachers. You study units focused on children from birth to eight years. There are four or five units that hold 96 credit points during the entire duration of that course. Um, third point is that the units provide you an insight into child development. These are just what the units are going to teach all of the students. So it's going to be an insight into child development, teaching practices, practices that includes Aboriginal perspectives, family and community context, history and philosophy of early childhood. You also gain work experience in child care and kindergarten settings when you do your work placements, which is mandatory to complete your course. After completing your course, you can find employment in public or private kindergartens, long daycare centers and early childhood centers as well. Sorry, just a second. I hope you can see my screen now. So these are the leading education providers that provide graduate diploma of early childhood teaching or education courses along with their fees. So if you look at Swinburne University, the total fees is 30,000. If we look at VU, the total fees is 29,200. RMIT's fees is 33,600 and SU's fees is mentioned below. Please be noted that all of these universities, they do provide scholarships as well based on your past course. So once you have submitted your application, the universities do assess your application for scholarships and provide you if you are eligible for any of these scholarships. Let's look at the key points now. So. The course is fully accredited with all of these courses that are provided by these um, universities are accredited with ACECQA. The course duration is one year and it is usually done in a blended mode. So you have, you have to go to the classes, but you do have an option for online classes as well. So it is a blended mode not completely online, not completely face-to-face um, -face engagement is required as well. Um, VR simulated teaching practice is also enabled. So a lot of universities, especially Swinburne and Victoria University, they do follow the VR simulated teaching practice. The students who are studying this course should have a working with children check, which is mandatory when you study this course and also when you go for your work placement. Now, if we have a look at the academic requirements, a bachelor's degree is required in any discipline. So basically, if you are in Australia and if you want to study this course, you need to have a bachelor's degree that is of AQF level seven or higher in, either to in order to study this course. 
Another requirement is if you do not hold this, you need to have a diploma of early childhood education and care and a minimum of five years of work experience that is done in the last seven years. Third point, if you hold a bachelor's degree from countries other than Australia, Canada, New Zealand, UK, US, or Ireland, you will be required to complete an IELTS PT or TOEFL for your entry as, a, as your entry requirement. These are the key points continued. So during the period of this qualification, the students are required to do 60 days of supervised placement. So any university that you study at, you need to do placement, which is a part of that course structure, and it is mandatory for your skill assessment later on as well. So the students undertake placements in early childhood settings. Um, they learn putting theories and concepts and ideas into practice while being mentored by qualified and experienced early childhood teachers. The universities do help you with placements as well. The students can also earn while they learn whether university provides opportunities to work directly with their partner centers. So if you look at Swinburne, especially, they do have um, partnership with the Garden, Good Start and all of these childhood child care centers. And they do provide internship or work placement opportunities as well, which are paid. And if especially for students who are looking to study this course, it's a very good option because you get a chance to earn while you are studying something. So you basically are studying something and you then get a chance to put that into practice while earning as well, which I think is a very um, impressive feature. If we also look at the English language requirements, um, on this screen, you can have a look at the English language requirements of Swinburne, RMIT, VU, and SCU. Of course, if you have a look at Swinburne, they do accept um, overall band of 6.5, no band less than 6. So you do not basically need 7 or 7.5 in order to get your admission done. You still can get enrolled on an overall band of 6.5. Same with RMIT and SCU as well. Also, if you have studied a bachelor's degree um, in Australia or a master's, you can straight away get an admission. So you do not always have to need to have PTE or IELTS in order to get enrolled in this course at any education provider. Now, if we have a look at skill assessment and PR pathway, so the skilled occupation list, if you have a look at the skilled occupation list, and if you type in this quote, early childhood pre-primary school teacher, and score quote is 241111, um, this is the skill assessment. So basically, once you've completed this course, you will be applying for your skill assessment as an early childhood teacher. The skill assessment confirms that you have the required qualification and English language proficient, proficiency for your nominated occupation. In this case, our nominated occupation would be an early childhood teacher and all of the applications that are submitted are assessed against two criteria that we will be discussing in the next slide. It is mandatory for every applicant to meet both of the criteria. So there are two criteria. Criteria: first is the English criteria, and second is the qualification criteria. It's not that you um, are you do match with the qualification criteria, but you do not have the English language criteria. You wouldn't get the skill assessment. You need to satisfy both of the criteria. Uh, the Skill Assessment Authority is Australian Institute of Teaching and School Leadership. It is often called as AITSL in short form if we look at that. AITSL is the one who does the skill assessment for early childhood or pre-primary school teachers. One more point, um, just to put it again, early childhood teachers, they teach children from birth up until up to eight years old. So that is the age group that you would be teaching if you study this course and when you become an early childhood teacher. So let's discuss the first criteria, which would be the qualification. As you can see, I've mentioned that completion of a minimum of four years full-time or part-time equivalent higher education level of study is mandatory as a part of your qualification criteria. So 
the study must include an initial teacher education qualification comparable to the education level of an Australian bachelor degree. Australian bachelor degree, degree should be basically of AQF level seven or higher, which includes at least one year full-time higher education level study of early childhood teacher initial education. And second point, completion of at least 45 days of supervised teaching practice with students across birth to eight years age, age range. Now, if we discuss at this first point, at least one year full-time higher education level study of early childhood teacher, initial teacher education. Usually what happens is a lot of students, they have done their bachelors of accounting in Australia, and then they choose to go on and study a graduate diploma of early childhood. This is what we are discussing here. You need to at least study one year full time. So the graduate diploma of early childhood is a one year full time um, course. It does include the initial teacher education qualification, which is required for skill assessment. And you can, so there are three options. First, you can do a bachelor's, just bachelor's of early childhood teaching and go on to become an early childhood teacher and get your skill assessment. You can do a master's of early childhood and you can go on to become an early childhood teacher. If you have done your master's in a different stream or if you've done your bachelor's in a different stream, you can study a graduate diploma of early childhood and then go on to become an early childhood teacher. So the condition only is to do one year of early childhood or one year of, we, should, we can say, initial teacher education, which is um, mandatory. Second point, you need to have at least 45 days of supervised teaching practice. So during your course, during this graduate diploma for early childhood, um, it is over the duration of the course that you have to do the placement, not completely at the start, not completely at the end. You can do, you have to do it over the duration of this course. It is mandatory to do 45 days of supervised teaching practice. So without this placement, you will not be able to have your skill assessment which is mentioned here. And then this is basically the qualification criteria. So first, one year of initial education qualification that we need to do. Second, we need to have a 45 days of supervised teaching practice or a placement, we can say. Now go on to discussing the second criteria, which is the English language proficiency. Proficiency in English language can be demonstrated by one of the following options. So I have mentioned two options. The first option is completion of at least four full years of study in higher education in Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, the US, UK, um, resulting in qualification comparable to the education level of an Australian bachelor's degree of AQF level seven or higher. Now, according to this option one, one must complete four full years of study in Australia if you have not done this, that's fine. We do still have the option two. The option two is academic version of the international, academic version of the IELTS that shows a score of at least seven, seven, eight, eight in reading and writing and speaking and listening respectively. So you need to have seven in reading and writing and eight in speaking and listening. That's the option two. If you do not, have seven seven let's say you appear for IELTS um, you get seven in reading and writing and eight in speaking but you're unable to score eight in listening you can appear for just one of this module so you can appear for listening again and try to get the required um, IELTS module band which you are aiming for in this case it would be eight uh, if you do not have four full years of study in Australia so usually what students do is if someone has done their master's in Australia and they, they study a graduate diploma of early childhood, now the only option that they would be left is with, in let's for example say that they will have to score 7788 eight in IELTS. If after a lot of attempts, they are not able to score this, they can again study another course for one year and satisfy this four full years of study requirement that is required. So basically you have to satisfy the English language proficiency and the qualification criteria 
both of these in order to have a positive skill assessment from AITSL. And as I mentioned, AITSL can accept ALS one skill retake test. So they have started doing it lately. Earlier, you would have to, for example, if you didn't score seven in reading and then you did score right, seven in writing and eight in speaking and listening, you would have to appear for the whole test or IELTS again. But lately they have introduced this. You can just do the one skill retake if you are unable to score the desired uh, score that you have aimed for and which is required for skill assessment. Um, yep, this is pretty much it with the information regarding the courses. You can go on to ask any questions that you have and I would be very much happy to answer all of those. So I'll start answering the questions that we are getting. Um, Banti Taneja has asked that, can government primary school teacher from India can do this or apply for subclass 190? For subclass 190. Hi Banti, thank you for the question. You can reach out to our migration agents at Aussies group. And I think they would be the best persons to help you with this query of yours. Jed Wahura, Scale Assessment BCA. Hi, Jed. You can again reach out to our migration agents and uh, they will be very much happy to help you with your skill assessment. Regarding English test waiver, finished three years Australian study. Just give me a second. I'm going to read this question and I'll be answering that. Hi, Teddy. If you have finished three years Australian study, one year diploma of business and two years of bachelor's of business, and you, you have mentioned that one year in diploma was linked to that two years bachelor's of business, yes. Can English test be waived for graduate diploma for early childhood skill assessment? So Teddy, in your case, you would see, basically you have to keep one thing in mind. If you have four years of Australian study, be it bachelor's or altogether, or if you have done, for example, if you've done your bachelor's and you go on to study a master's, all in all, it should be a four years of study that you would need to get your English waived off. So if I assume that, yes, you have studied a Bachelor of Business that is for three years and then you study a graduate diploma for early childhood, the total would be four years. And yes, your English would be waived off. So you can go for that. Sina Sri, you've asked that what visa type is the best for early childhood teacher? Hi, Sina. I... If you are asking for P permanent residency, you can go for 190, you can go for 189. Um, both are good. If you guys want, you can share the link of this live session. If you think anyone would be benefited from this session, you can share and ask more questions. I would be very much happy to answer all of those questions. This course is especially really good for people who are on their TR. I come across a lot of students who do who have done their masters in Australia. They've done their masters in accounting, masters in IT, or just MBA, and are on their TRs and are looking for a course that would not take a lot of time in order to go on their permanent residency pathways and that has a good career option as well. It's a really good option for all of those um, individuals because you just have to study for one year. You just have to do the work placement for usually 60, 45 to 60 days. So the universities do offer work placements and then Usually it is between 45 to 60 
days, which is pretty easy to work on. The fees is also good. The fees is affordable. And if you look at the career pathway, it is good along with the permanent residency option as well. And also, if you've done your bachelor's in Australia, if you've done your master's in Australia, and you're still looking to study something that has got a PR pathway, you can definitely study this course because bachelor's, let's say three years, master's two years, you will have completed five years of Australian study and you would your English would be waived off. So basically, you would just need to complete this course and work on your get getting on your skill assessment. So yeah, that would be pretty good for all of those individuals hi everyone please feel free to answer feel free to ask as many questions as you would want related to the course If you want, I can also um, share the presentation again, if that's a bit helpful. Yeah, I've shared the presentation again. You guys can have a look at the presentation and go on to ask questions if you've got any. You can also share the link of this session with your friends, with your family, with your relatives, if you think it is a really good um, option, as I mentioned, for a PR pathway for skill assessment as well. And if you think a lot of students come up and ask me that, oh God, this is gonna be a really difficult course. If you study it for just one year, how would, how would it be? possible to finish it in one year guys it's just one year course there are usually four or five units and they do have 96 credit points so usually you do not have to see every course any course that you study would require effort but if you are interested especially women and i mean not to not to um distinguish but a lot of girls come up to me and ask like that they, they do have teaching backgrounds. They are interested in teaching. This course is especially good for all of those um, people and students who are willing to study this course. It's, hi, Sita. Thank you for your question. Is there any early childhood related to your course that doesn't need placement? Sina, you can go on to see, you can go on to do a master's. It's not that you wouldn't be able to do a placement. Placement is necessary for a skill assessment. So you would need to do that. But if you have placement is necessary, mandatory basically. So just even if you study a one-year course or a two-year course, it is important to do that. So either ways, you will have to appear, go for a placement, I would say. Thank you for your question, Sina. You can ask any other questions as well. You can also visit Aussie's branch, your nearest Aussie's branch, if you need any help regarding this. You can contact us. We would be more than happy to help you with any of your education and migration related inquiries. As I mentioned for, I, hi, Sina, sorry. So you did Master of Teaching, just a minute. Yes, hi, Sina. Yes, so you did Master of Teaching early childhood. In case you can't get the required I'll score. You might need to study for another two years. You have done your placements already. Yes, Sina, that's right. But as I said, IELTS has, AITSL has started accepting one skill retake. So if you think that 
you can't score seven in reading at once and you will do good in writing, speaking, listening. You can get seven, eight, eight respectively. You can, and let's hope just that you do get seven, seven, eight, eight at once. But if you do not get seven, seven, eight, eight in once, you can appear for reading or writing again and get the um, one skill retake and appear and pass successfully go on to have your skill assessment done. So your English language proficiency, as mentioned, can only be waived off. The IELTS requirement can only be waived off once you've completed four full years of study in a higher education setting. So in a, when I say in a higher education setting, I mean AQF level seven or higher. So basically bachelor's level, bachelor's level all or higher. So bachelor's, you can do a graduate diploma, anything. But yes, you do need to do, do that. Everyone who's watching this live session, you guys can um, ask more questions. I'll be very much happy to help you with your questions. You can ask questions related to enrollments, fees, um, skill assessment, PR pathway, anything. I've just opened the presentation as well, so, on, so to give you the basic information. Sina, do you have any more questions? How long does it take for skill assessment? I think, Sina, you it it usually takes up to two months for skill assessment, but you can reach out to our migration agents and they can definitely help you with the skill assessment. And if you think that you are facing difficulty with IELTS, I mean getting the score, you can, as I mentioned, we do provide, we do help with IELTS and PTE tutorials and classes as well. So yes you can reach out to us for IELTS tutorials in order to get your desired score and later on to get your skill assessment too. You can ask more questions, Sina. Guys, I'll be here just for a few more moments. Um, if any questions you guys can ask related to graduate diploma for early childhood, childhood, its skill assessment and VR pathway, I'll be very much happy to help you with all of those questions. You can also reach out to your nearest Aussies branch for any of your education and migration related inquiries. We do provide ALS and PTE tutorials and classes as well. So, yep. sharing the screen as well. Do you have any more questions, Sina? Please feel free to ask because so if I'm not getting any more questions, I think I'll end this live session for now you guys can reach out to your nearest Aussies branch for any of your education and migration related inquiries. Um, we'll be very much happy to help you with all of those. Please feel free to reach out and yep, see you guys soon. Thank you. Have a good night.